holy day together. We do have a few announcements. There will be um, possibly a brief deacons meeting. I don't know if we have enough people to make the meeting work following worship today, um, as well as a brief uh, dinner meeting. We just need to get some last minute uh, plans in place and set for this Saturday is the CD takeout dinner. Monday, tomorrow morning, we'll have Bible study back here again at 10 a.m. And we'll have a buildings and grounds meeting at 6.30 in this room as well on Wednesday. Um, what we do need uh, moving forward, and some of you might have seen the email, is we'll need to set up ushers, whether it's each week or each month. Um, this is something that if we don't have someone in place to, if we don't have someone in place to usher, we technically can't open for in-person worship. It's part of our reopening plan, and it's a requirement by the state. Um, and this person is just to make sure that everybody is compliant. And um, so James was nice enough to fill in today, and he can do it next week. But the third. Uh, weekend then we're away and so someone will need to fill in and we'll need somebody for December then as well. There are still sign-up sheets on the back table if you came in. Uh, if you want to order CD dinners, if you want to sign up to help for the takeout, and if you'd be willing to help uh, bake Christmas cookies for our, our uh, hopefully Christmas uh, bazaar uh, fun at the beginning of December. Let us begin today with a call to worship. We gather this morning to celebrate the lives of persons we name as saints. Some of them and called into question the institutions and structures of our society. We celebrate these persons and their lives in all aspects of God's creation. Let us join together in prayer. Timeless God, we thank you
anticipation of that day, we come before God and confess our sin, seeking to repent and be reshaped into a closer image of the one we follow and worship. Let us pray. Lord of every tribe. But the day 
Spanish flu? Did they restrict communion to even less than four times a year, which is what tradition would have been like? Did the pastor stop doing house calls or hospital visits? Were people afraid to travel or have family visit? How was the community affected? Did the dairy farmer suffer or the black dirt farmers lose out? Did businesses shut down? I tried looking into the church history a little bit, and sadly I wasn't able to find much. Any session minutes must be stored somewhere else as they weren't in the church office. There is absolutely nothing mentioned of the Spanish flu in our 1960s church history book. And it's almost like it didn't exist. Perhaps people didn't want to talk about it. Remember it. So what can I tell you? Well, not much. From the church registry, the recorded number of deaths in that time period seemed to be minimal for our congregation. No more than usual from previous or post years. And perhaps being such a small community and spread out among farms, we were spared a bit. But there was some effect. No one escaped completely untouched. While I don't know much about our own congregation, there is a bit more out there, stories within our community. In fact, part of my story now connects back to this story from over a hundred years ago. My husband, James Cop, loves to tell us his parents would have never met if it wasn't for the Spanish flu pandemic. His father, a young man, became ill, and so the family decided it was best to hire a nurse to help take care of him. They must have spent significant amount of time together for in the end, once his health was recovered and life went back to normal, he wound up marrying her, this nurse of his. And so our pop Sandy loves to laugh at this in relation to James and I wedding. Who knew a hundred years later his great grandson would have to figure out life among a new pandemic? And it's interesting if we pause to think about it and the way that Pop tells the story of his parents and the way they told the story to him. This was far from the experience many others had during the Spanish flu pandemic with lives lost and grief and pain and anguish, frustration and wondering if it would ever end, if life would return to normal. There were numerous ways, and not just the spread of disease and death, but of emotions, especially with this being so closely tied to World War I. But the thing is, Pop tells the story differently. He sees the results of the flu pandemic differently because his parents saw it differently. It's not that they didn't feel the reality of it, the grief, the pain, the illness, but they understood their lives were forever changed because of it. And for them, in a sense, it was a good thing. It brought about a family, sustainability on the farm, a good life, well lived. And so I wonder what men will say a hundred years from now. What stories will we pass down? Will it be griefs and pains or will there be some joys and celebrations as well? Will we learn to tell the story differently? Will we learn to see the reality around us differently? Tell of how we entered into a new normal from this time. For honestly, this, this is what Jesus is all 
all about. This is what Jesus does. It is what he empowers the people around him to do, to talk about a new normal, new reality, the kingdom of God. And these blessings, these beatitudes, have perhaps become a bit too familiar to us that we don't hear that that is what's being proclaimed. We learned them in Sunday school, heard them in sermons over the years, were taught that these were things to strive after. As one theologian notes, they were more like be attitudes, the attitudes we are to be, than the understanding of the radical blessing Jesus intended. For that's what they are, a radical blessing for revisioning the world around us. Just before this sermon on the we were told that Jesus was been, had been teaching through Galilee, proclaiming good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. And this act was so powerful, it spread throughout all of Syria, and they brought to him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, demonics, epileptics, paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from, and from beyond the Jordan. That's a lot of people. Not some pretty powerful <coughs> stuff. These are the crowds that are at the mountain this day, and it sounds like they're from every corner of the Israelite world. This is the crowd Jesus preached this sermon to, the Sermon on the Mount, this powerful, radical, world-shaking message that began with these blessings. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted. A radical message to these crowds, for Jesus is giving blessings to those who would have never heard them before. The oppressed, the ostracized, the poor and weak. And perhaps we don't hear it this way because they've been on a repeat for us for so many years. So what if we consider it this way? Blessed are those who are caught in addiction, for they will find healing and love in God. Blessed are those who miscarried, for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who are depressed or anxious, for they will find peace in God. Blessed are those single parents, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are those struggling to pay their bills, for they will find treasure not of this world. Blessed are those who are anxious and worry, who live in fear of what's next, for God will be their guiding light. Blessed are those in foster care, for they will find family in the house of God. Blessed are the homeless, for they will find shelter in the wings of the Almighty. And blessed are those who are shunned, unwelcomed, or ostracized, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Do they sound different this way? Do they make you a bit uncomfortable or a bit calm and relaxed? Do they feel a bit too much? Or do they feel like it's what you've needed to hear? For these are the blessings of Jesus. These are the blessings of God. Helping us to reframe the reality around us. To not see as the world sees, but see the radical, inbreaking kingdom of God for what it truly is.
filled with steadfast love, mercy, and grace. And so, what would it look like to start thinking of blessings in this way? How could the whole world be changed if we share blessings with those who have never received them, who have been far from them? That they feel the blessings are more so only for the good, the powerful, the rich, or the privileged. For the past, I don't know how many years now, there's been a movement on social media to use the word blessed. Hashtag blessed. This is always in relation to something good that happened in someone's life. Anything from buying a new house, the birth of a child, to things like a good hair day, or a team winning a sporting event, or finding a cute pair of shoes. All things tied up with comfort and an easy life. Much of our culture and society today, or even within the church, we tend to use blessings or blessed in this way in the comforts, in the good things. But what if, what would it look like to see hashtag blessed, God's working through my depression with me? Or hashtag blessed, I was able to pay my bills this month, finally. Hashtag blessed, the Lord will bring me comfort. What if we're a little more honest a little more open, a little more radical with our blessings, rather than hashtag blessed I found a nice pair of shoes. These blessings that have the potential to push the doors wide open for a large and warm welcome for folks who have perhaps never felt, never been blessed, or never heard words of blessing over them. And maybe in doing this, in extending wide and lavish blessings, we begin to align to the kingdom of God rather than the kingdom of the world. Where we can say, hashtag blessed with Spanish flu, it helped me meet my wife. Even in sickness, God provided life and new life and new beginnings. but to a new normal. The normal, or perhaps some would argue the abnormal, of the will, way, and reality of God working in and through this world. Maybe, just maybe, we can start today, this great day of the church, All Saints Day, a day where we remember and honor the saints who came before us and the saints that surround us today. The ones who have blessed us in our lives and the ones who have been blessings to the world. And the ones that are here with us now. Providing shoulders to cry on, arms to hug, hands to Maybe not in the season of COVID, but in this journey of life providing ears to hear our pain and joy, feet to walk with us on the journey, understanding and comforting hearts, minds to help us talk it through, whatever it may be. But maybe, and most importantly, lips and tongues to proclaim and give lavish And so I'd like you all just to pause for a moment. Get a little comfortable. If you want, plant your feet. Take a few deep breaths. And think about the blessing that you need to hear today. What word of love and comfort, of mercy and peace, 
What word of radical or lavish blessing do you need this day? In the season of COVID, in the midst of the election, in time of uncertainty, what lavish blessing do you need in your life of health concerns or family concerns? In your life of unrest or unknown or wondering where is God? What blessing do you need this day? Breathe it in and out. Hold that thought even if it comes with a little bit of pain or discomfort. Trust it to God. And know, know that whatever it is, whatever blessing you need this day, blessed are you in your need, in your pain, your fears, your despair, your anxiety or worry, or even in your joys and celebrations. For you are a beloved child of God, and you will be comforted and filled. You will inherit the earth and receive mercy, and you will see God. And blessed are you who go out and share these lavish blessings, these blessings of God for yours. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. Amen.
knee now. Run across it.
in remembrance of me. Friends, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Let us join together. The bread of life.
death. We mark this on All Saints Day. We lift this up to the Lord. Let us enter into a time of silent prayer, lifting up the prayers that remain on our hearts.
Both now.